Hi, and welcome to Katie's Corner in Space. My name is Katie, and today we're going to go over Picard Season 2, Episode 8. And at the end, I'd like to go over one of the comments I got over last week's episode. So, without any further ado, let's get to it. Ravi and Seven are able to locate Agnes for a moment, but she manages to escape, leaving Seven to try and get into her head and predict her moves. The Queen wants to begin assimilation of Earth, but lacks the raw material needed to begin. Seven deduces there's one place she can go, Dr. Soon. Dr. Soong is having a rough day. Corey was left with a message by Q as well as a cure, which she takes before confronting Soon with the truth of her experimental existence. Now fully rid of her imperfections, which held her indoors, she walks outside and away from her father. Agnes finds him later and tells him of the future from which she arrived, where he is hailed as the father of the future. After hearing that, Soon is more than willing to help and provides not only the technological means for the queen to assimilate humans, but the organic ones as well in the form of soldiers he requests from an unnamed general. After being hauled in by one Agent Wells, Guinan and Picard are interviewed because Wells doesn't care for the term interrogation. Wells pontificates for a while and questions their motives surrounding the Europa mission. Q walks in to chat with Guinan alone for a hot second, letting her know the call worked, but he had to take the long way there without powers. Picard, in keeping with this season's theme, tells Wells everything. After Wells reveals he once stumbled upon some aliens in the woods he refers to as monsters. But Picard clears up both the actions and identities of the aliens, and Wells, after getting fired from the FBI, lets Picard and Guinan leave. For the La Serena, Rios is entertaining the doctor and her son as the system sit in diagnostic mode before Rios attempts to restore function to the transporters. But a piece of board code will not allow the transporters Porters to function. There you have it. There's the basics of what happened in today's episode. Some underlying stories are starting to come to light. The connection between Rafi and Elnor is discussed a bit more, shown at least, and I really liked how Seven is kind of looking into herself along with Rafi. But let's start from the beginning. Q is dying. That's big news. We thought maybe he was just sort of losing his mind, and at first it seems like he might be interested in the revelations that might come with death, but as no revelations are forthwith, he doesn't seem all that thrilled with Prospect anymore. I finally got my Vulcan mystery solved. Well, not my Vulcan mystery, but the Vulcans weren't somebody who's there now in 2024. It's someone in the past that Wells ran into, or two someones, I'm guessing, doing some observations as Vulcans like to do. The fact that this left him so scarred and basically turned him into the Star Trek version of Mulder, it was definitely a revelation. Although if you watch, you can kind of figure that out within about two seconds of his interview. Now I know I've brought up Rios and Dr. Teresa quite a bit. Um, I do like my Star Trek couple, but this week's interaction between the doctor and Rios was really forced. It felt like to me, I, I understand why the doctor wants to make up some scenario where they reveal some innermost secret to each other so she'd have a little something more to remember him by. At the end, I think the kiss was a better option than the little story. The most realistic part of that entire thing was her kid interrupting their game. <laughs> Speaking of relationships, like I said, Rafi and Seven, I adore them, but they are killing me. They've each got their own baggage. They both are dealing with it, but there always seems to be a wall getting in the way, a, a wrong word, a hurt feeling. I like that they kind of back away and go, all right, this is what's been going on, I'm sorry. They're very self-aware, which is probably good because they can kind of police each other when they go a little overboard and may accidentally hurt each other just because they're so frustrated with themselves. Now the flashback with Elnor and Rafi, the reveal of how she feels she manipulated Elnor to be put in the situation he was, there's guilt there that I, I know she's trying to address for herself. While that's all in good, I really enjoy just being able to see Elnor again, and it, it makes me feel even more concerned that we might not get him back. As far as Agnes beginning the assimilation process at the end, I think we may have more time than we normally would when the Borg are assimilating humans, simply because she's using outdated technology. Soon maybe advanced for humans in 2024, but not from the 25th century. So whatever access she has to technology, the assimilation process is most definitely going to have to take longer, which hopefully will give Seven and Rafi more time to find her, figure out what's going on. She's moved locations once again, so here's to hoping. 
Now, of course, during the episode assimilation, we saw that Rios left his badge behind in the clinic. Of course, where that badge went has been a bit of mystery. Now it's solved, the FBI had it. I wish that it had been a bigger deal because about two minutes after it's revealed, it's not a problem anymore. And of course, we're left with a different mystery. Why does the escape matter more than the track? How are they getting out of this? Are they not getting Agnes back? No, I really believe that Agnes will be back Queen will be defeated. Elnor will come back. This is Star Trek. We're probably going to get most of the stuff we want. How we're going to get there? That's the mystery. <laughs> Now, before I go, I'd like to bring up uh, a comment that I got from last week's episode concerning the validity of the information that we're getting from Picard's coma dream that he has with his father. Yeah, it's all in his mind. Probably ought to take the information with a grain of salt. Now, the reason I believe that the information we get holds a lot of water is because the writers wanted to give us information. And rather than throw us into yet another flashback, I think the coma dream was a way for us to get uh, a little bit more background on Picard. Rather, it's completely and utterly accurate. Fairly sure he didn't walk around with a crown most of the time, but the emotional issues that his mother had, uh, the depression that we think that she probably suffered from, and how he dealt with it and how he felt about his father as a child, that's all completely true. Or at least I feel like it's coming out of his head, so those are his memories. And he's looking back at these memories, these thoughts, as now an adult not as a child. And your point of view, of course, changes as you get older. And I think that's all I've got on this week's episode. Really do appreciate the comments. I was not going to address all of them because uh, there have been quite a few and one particularly quite long. However, I do think that that main point of is the information we are getting from Picard's memory, actual and factual. Again, I think the writers tried to take that opportunity to give us some information we would want to know, and in a way that was not yet another flashback. That's my summary and review of the episode this week. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like below and feel free to subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and check out this one, and I'll see you next week. Bye.